Coming up next on News Live at 6, SU's annual family weekend. Everything you need to know and what to expect. And Sunny Balkan gives us a look at today's weather forecast and all the rain dominating campus. And committee leader Elijah Cummings has passed away today amidst the impeachment inquiry on President Trump. News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. The rain is expected to continue throughout the night. Good evening, I'm Connor White. And I'm Gabrielle Caracciola. Weather anchor Sunny Balkan will be with us shortly with a detailed forecast. Families from around the world will be coming to campus for SU's annual family weekends. There are a lot of activities planned. Thank you, Gabrielle. And Citrus TV's Katie Lane is live outside the dome to break down everything you need to know. Katie? Thank you, Gabrielle. Family weekend is full of a ton of events, so I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, so the weekend kicks off at 9 a.m. on Friday with a Shark Tank styled innovation competition. A panel of SU parents and successful entrepreneurs from a variety of industry sectors will serve as judges. Throughout the day Friday, there will be different information sessions for campus organizations such as the Panhellenic recruitment and study abroad opportunities. Cues on the quad starts at 4 p.m. There are families can listen to live music, play games, snap some photos with Otto, and grab a bite to eat. SU Orange Football hosts the Pittsburgh Panthers here at the Dome with kickoff at 7, 7 p.m. To buy tickets, visit the Dome box office or in person. Uh, throughout the weekend, there will be campus tours, photo ops, and you can meet with DPS officers. So that's really cool. As for travel to these events, you should plan to park on South Campus in the Skytop lot, and buses will be running from 8.30 a.m. on Friday. Live outside the Carrier Dome, I'm Katie Lane, Citrus TV News. Thank you, Katie. Families are encouraged to check in for Family Weekend between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Friday in the Goldstein Alumni and Faculty Center. For more information visit the events, for, about the events, visit parents.syr.edu. Now, Gabrielle, I don't know about you, but the main thing that I noticed out there was that the weather still looks a little crummy. I'm hoping that Family Weekend yeah, won't be totally rained it's out. It's been raining all day, and it's definitely not fun when you want to show your parents around campus if you, you know, want to have to stay inside. Even if of it the is rain. truly what Syracuse is about. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see what the forecast looks like. We go now to SU weather anchor Sunny Balkan. Sunny, what can you tell us? Well, guys, I know the weather is looking a little bit bleak today. I would not want to be Katie under any circumstances, but I can tell you that it is going to get better as the week goes on. Right now, let's focus on the negatives. It's raining outside. It's not going to stop raining anytime soon. Sadly, it's 48 degrees, rainy, cold to mild temperatures that will be continuing into tomorrow. Let me show you a little bit of that. Look, that rain just coming down. That's exactly what we've been experiencing out there in Syracuse today. Now, midnight, noon, 6 p.m., there's all clouds but there is going to be some light showers thrown in there, especially around the early morning hours. Temperatures staying in the high 40s, so a little bit chilly. You might want to take a coat with you and moderate humidity and clouds throughout the day. Temperatures warming up into the weekend. That's exactly what we want to see. You'll hear more about that in my full weather forecast. But for now, let's take a look at the CNY current temperatures. It is just simply miserable across the board. It's the only way to describe the weather. All 40s, very cold, very windy. The weather variation, you could either have clouds clouds or you can have rain. I know that seems a little bit dreary, but don't worry. I'll tell you more about the sunshine that's coming in my full weather forecast. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Sunny. Syracuse Athletics is offering faculty and staff discount tickets for the SU versus Pittsburgh football game on Friday. Tickets for the game are $10 for university faculty, staff, their children, and their guests. These tickets can be purchased online by phone call or in person at the Dome box office. The game starts Friday night at 7. And Syracuse alum and founder of Media Village, Jack Myers, is back on campus today. Myers will be speaking to students in just a few minutes, starting at 6.30 in Newhouse 3, room 140. During his time here at SU, he created a weekly newspaper formerly known as the Syracuse New Times. His latest project, Media Village, serves as a platform for an, ex for an exchange of knowledge among a variety of different media-related industries. Tonight's event is hosted by the Eric Maurer at Advertising Forum. Here on campus, the Whitman School hosted the 2019 Harry E. Salzburg Memorial Lecture program today. The 70th of anniversary celebration honored Johnson & Johnson for supply chain excellence and Ann Drake, founder of Awesome, for lifetime achievement with Salzburg medallions. Johnson & Johnson is currently battling a lawsuit alleging the company helped fuel the opioid crisis. 
And Theater of War, a public health project featuring readings from ancient Greek plays, will take place in Maxwell Hall tonight from 6 to 8, starring actors from Jericho and Law and & Order. The performance aims to prompt discussion about problems faced by veterans and their families, and will be followed by a panel and town hall discussion with veterans and experts on PTSD. SU's Burton Blatt Institute hosted Disability Arts and Culture as Vital Performance, the first part of a two-day symposium on disability arts with a reading and panel discussion. Today's event was in Bird Library with a reading by Kenny Fryers. Tomorrow's presentation will be in Deneen Hall from noon to 1.30. In celebration of International Pronouns Day, SU has included a new feature in MySlice. The MySlice website has launched the new feature with, called My Profile with the help from the Pronoun Gender Preferred Name Advisory Council and ITS. This is an updated version of the site's previous personal services section, which is now more user-friendly and customizable. You can now specify your personal pronouns under the Biographic tab in the My Profile, and the PGPNAC hopes this change will create a cultural shift on SU's campus. Orange After Dark will be hosting a trip to Apex Entertainment in Destiny, USA tonight. Shuttles will leave from College Place and the Goldstein, Goldstein Student Center excuse me, at 10.30 p.m., with the event ending at 1 in the morning. Tickets will include food and round-trip transportation. They're available at the Shine Box Office and are $3 for students. And new details now on the future of Onondaga County Democratic Elections Commis Commissioner Dustin Sarney, who was accused of driving for Uber and Lyft on county time. Today, District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick announced that no charges will be brought against Sarney. DA Fitzpatrick says Sarney did not violate any policy when he drove for the ride-sharing services on his lunch break. Fitzpatrick also says Sarney is not in an elected position and he often works more than the required hours each week. And Onondaga County Sheriff's deputies announced today that one man is dead after a hit-and-run crash on Onondaga Lake Parkway. 31-year-old Justin Quackenbush of Liverpool was struck at 11.08 p.m. on Saturday while walking near the CSX Railroad Bridge. The, dri the driver involved in the crash, who was operating a 2001 Nissan Altima, drove away heading towards East Syracuse. Deputies have since interviewed a person of interest in the case. The Salt City Market in downtown Syracuse is getting another store. Syracuse Cooperative Market is opening their second store in the downtown market. The Cooperative Market has been in the Westcott neighborhood for more than 45 years. This second location will be employing around 20 people and is scheduled to open in early 2021. The Syracuse University Marching Band is remembering one of their former baton girls who died last week. A Facebook post this morning announced that 90-year-old Dorothy Grover passed away last Thursday. Known as Dottie, Grover was one of the first baton girls to perform with the marching band at football games. After graduating from SU, she continued her baton twirling career, touring with the Harlem Globetrotters. She later co-authored several books, including the self-help uh, self book People Skills. She leaves behind three children, four stepchildren, and 11 grandkids. Two new food chains are looking to open in Clay. Construction has begun on a Five Guys in North End Commons Plaza off of Route 31. Meanwhile, an IHOP has received all the necessary permits for a location at the Great Northern Mall. Construction on the IHOP has not yet started, and there's no word yet on when either will be ready to serve food. According to a new Bloomberg report, the New York State Thruway will need to raise toll prices by 2022. The increase would help pay for the rising debt from the new Tappan Zee Bridge and other projects. Back in 2016, Governor Cuomo issued a policy freezing toll prices through 2020. Prices haven't gone up in nearly a decade. Two central New York congressmen have voted to denounce Trump for pulling U.S. troops out of Syria. Representatives John Katko and Anthony Brindisi both voted in favor of this resolution. Brindisi says Trump's decision to pull the troops out of northern Syria and leave the Kurds open to an attack from Turkey was reckless. This bipartisan resolution was passed in a 354 to 60 vote. Coming up, public schools in Chicago are closed. Find out why Chicago teachers are going on strike. And the EU has agreed to the Prime Minister's terms for a Brexit deal. What challenges Johnson might face now? Coming up next. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? Okay. Yeah, it's smoky. Catch. 
Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. fouls are pretty dumb but if you decide to drink and drive underage you could lose your license and your freedom underage drinking and driving the ultimate party foul patriotism it inspires passionate debate it's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country but what really makes up this country of ours it's the people to love america is to love all americans this year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. You're watching Citrus TV News with Connor White, Gabrielle Caracciolo, Sonny Balkin, and Katie Lane. Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Breaking this evening, Energy Secretary Rick Perry is resigning. Multiple reports this evening say that Perry informs the president that he will soon leave the job. This comes amidst the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. Perry's role in the administration's Ukrainian policy is under scrutiny. Maryland Representative Elijah Cummings has passed away at 68 today as a result of long-standing health problems. Cummings was the chairman of the House Oversight and Reform Committee and was deeply involved in the impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. Trump criticized Cummings' district as a rodent-infested mess, and the Maryland rep responded saying that the government officials should stop invoking fear, using racist language, and encouraging reprehensible behavior. Representative Carolyn Maloney, a Democrat from New York, will now take over the leadership of the committee to continue Cummings' work in the impeachment inquiry. And Vice President Mike Pence announced today that Turkey has agreed to a five-day ceasefire in Syria. Part of the deal means the United States will not impose any new sanctions, though it will take a permanent ceasefire to, to, to dissolve the sanctions imposed on Monday. The Turkish foreign minister, however, says the deal isn't actually a ceasefire. Instead, he said that Turkey is suspending operations for the five-day period for the Kurds, who he referred to as terrorists, to leave the region. The Kurds assisted U.S. forces to combat ISIS in Syria. Acting White House Chief of Staff, Staff Mick Mulvaney says that President Trump withheld military aid from Ukraine, not to push an investigation into former Vice President Joe Biden, but to investigate whether or not Ukrainian actors meddled in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. He said the withholdings of aid was, go was part of the ongoing investigation into the 2016 election. When asked by a reporter if this was a quid pro quo, Mulvaney said, quote, we do that all the time. President Trump's request for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to look into the election happened over a phone call in July, the same phone call where Trump asked Zelensky to look into possible corruption between Joe Biden and his son. The U.S. was actively withholding the military aid to Ukraine at the time of the call. Meanwhile, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union criticized President Trump in a testimony before House investigators today. Gordon Sondland said President Trump directed him and others to work on Ukraine policy with Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Sondland said he disagreed with Giuliani's involvement and believes the instruction sidelined both the State Department and the National Security Council. President Donald Trump's Florida golf resort, the Doral, will host the G7 summit next June. White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney in a press conference denied allegations that Trump would be profiting from the event, saying Trump's brand is probably strong enough as it is and did not need a boost. In the same news conference, Mulvaney revealed that climate change will not be on the G7 summit's agenda and the event will rather focus on economic issues. In the United States National Climate Assessment released in 2018, the report did note that climate change will be a disaster for the U.S. economy. Teachers in Chicago went on strike today over contract disputes. Chicago Public Schools did not resolve disputes over pay, benefits, class size, and teacher preparation time. Many teachers say the walkout is about getting more resources and smaller class sizes. All classes were canceled today. This is the first major Chicago teacher walkout since 2012. 
New video from the Hard Rock Hotel collapse in New Orleans shows employees expressing concerns about the building's structural integrity. Citrus TV does not have that video. What you are seeing is the aftermath of the collapse. The social media post shows employees pointing out bending support posts and sagging concrete. One worker can even be heard saying that the situation was, quote, seriously bad. The latest in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has cleared the first hurdle to get his Brexit deal approved. Today, the European Union has agreed to Johnson's terms, but he'll need to clear a second and somewhat higher hurdle for the deal to take effect. British Parliament will have to approve the deal, and already British politicians say they won't support it. Johnson likely won't have the support of the DUP, a Northern Irish party that opposes the plan's designation of a customs border along the Irish Sea. Members of Parliament will consider the deal in a special session on Saturday. The riots of the Catalan separatist movement continue in Spain as protesters shift from peaceful activism to violence. For now, three consecutive nights, demonstrations have set fires in the streets, causing $1.2 million worth of damage. The violent sprees have also injured nearly 100 people, half of which were police officers. Leader of the movement in Catalan... President Quim Torra has vowed to hold a new succession vote in, in the next two years, aiming for Catalonia to become an independent region by 2021. Back here at home after the break, another look at your weather. And an unlikely catch on a lake in Montana. Stay tuned. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. go Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. For those viewing at home, if you haven't been able to tell already, we've been getting a little bit of rain here in the Northeast. That's because we have a nor'eastern going on right now. As you can see, it is swirling and twirling just all around New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, and especially hitting us here right at home in Syracuse. This is actually moving a little bit right now. You can't tell. You're going to see it. There it goes. See <laughs> a lot of green. Syracuse, it does get a little bit of a break for about a half an hour in there, but the green is going to stay mostly throughout the night and into tomorrow morning and a few light showers tomorrow too, but it will clear out through the night. So it's not too bad, even though today was it was pretty bad. That's why I'm putting the outdoor activity outlook sadly at a moderate. I love it when it's at a high or sometimes at a very high, but I just I just can't give it to us this week. Temperatures ranging from the high 40s to the high 60s. So mostly within that 50s range, humidity decreasing into the weekend. So it is going to get a little bit cooler in a nice way because the rain is going to clear out and clouds until early next week, but still some sun. And let me show you the sun right now. See, look, there it is. It's tiny. It's 
tiny and yellow, but we're still getting some of it. Now, today is Thursday, and it is National Pasta Day, which I just thought was so appropriate that it's nice and rainy, so maybe a nice way to carve up as you're walking through all that rain today. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, you are getting a little bit of sun, most of it coming in on Saturday and Sunday, and on Monday, you're getting 66, no clouds in the sky, and on Tuesday, the rain is sadly coming back, and I will tell you a little bit more about that in my full weather forecast. Coming up, we're going to preview tomorrow night's Syracuse football game against Pitt. We'll hear from Dino Babers about the matchup. Also, lacrosse, playoff baseball, Thursday night football. It's all next. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. Superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Call me Maxi, but I prefer a tripod. I was your above average four legged homie and then wham bam minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. In their last game, the 2019 Syracuse football team had to answer the question, can they beat an ACC opponent? So far, the answer, no. Welcome back, I'm Jonah Karp. A week ago today, SU fell to NC State 16 to 10. And after an extended week of practice, the Orange can put that loss in the rearview mirror. It's only conference foes ahead for Syracuse, starting with the pick game tomorrow, a chance for SU to pick up that elusive first ACC win. And if history is any indication, this game is gonna be pretty good. People in the room, it's just a rivalry. Before I came, I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell you why it's going to be a close game. And then you look at the games that we've had, and every last one of them has been a memory. Now, I can remember every game that we played against those guys. And uh, it's just interesting that the two groups get together, and it doesn't matter what the record is. It's normally one heck of a football game. Nothing like lacrosse news in mid-October. SU goalkeeper Drake Porter was selected to represent Team Canada in the U.S. Lacrosse Fall Classic. Porter was an all-conference selection last year. The senior will play in two games against the United States this weekend. Porter is one of two goalies on the 23-man roster. The rest of Syracuse men's lacrosse will compete in an intra-squad intra scrimmage as part of the alumni Orange Alumni Classic. Syracuse student athletes not only getting it done on the field, they're also getting it done in the classroom. As you announced, it has a graduation success rate of 93% That's the highest mark for the school since the NCAA began tracking the data back in 2004. Syracuse is tied for 12th among the 65 Power 5 schools. The university's non-revenue athletes graduated at an especially high rate with eight different teams, including women's basketball, lacrosse, and volleyball, graduating 100% of their athletes. The football program graduated 85 5%, while the men's basketball team had an 80% success rate. 
And in baseball, the playoffs are back. These two teams got rained out yesterday. They're back at it tonight. The Yankees trail the Astros 2-1 to one in the series. Masahiro Tanaka takes the bump in pinstripes down in the Bronx. He'll face Zach Greinke for Houston. The Astros have taken the last two games against the Bombers after New York won the first game 7-0. Tanaka was actually pitching for the Yankees in that game. Whoever wins will play the Nationals in the World Series. Back to football, Chiefs and Broncos, an AFC West showdown. Denver hasn't beaten Kansas City in four years, but the Chiefs have cooled off a bit after their hot start. They've lost two in a row. The Broncos have won their last two. Two big notes for fantasy football players. Emmanuel Sanders is playing tonight. Sammy Watkins not playing tonight. Guys? Well, Jonah, let's bring it back to baseball for a second. Two really good teams got yeah. rained out last night. Who do you have winning the series? I think Houston's going to win the series. Houston was my pick in the preseason to go all the way. I mean, I think they're far and away the most complete team in baseball. I do think the Yankees win tonight. They make it close. The series goes seven. I think the Yankees take tonight. Well, we'll say that I'm technically a Yankees fan, so <laughs> I'm hoping they are able to pull it out tonight. <laughs> well, when we come back, one final look at your weather. Stay with us. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Welcome back. We have Citrus TV weather anchor Sonny Balkan here to clear up some of the weather that's happening now. I think this week, as unfortunately Syracuse weather usually is, it's a little unpredictable. We've seen sun, we've seen heat, we've seen cold, we've seen rain. So what can we see next week? I do agree. This week has definitely ran the gambit of all different types of weather biomes and spectrums. However, we can expect the exact same thing next Aww. week. Isn't that exciting? Aww. That's right. This is this week, but it's actually a pretty good mirror of what we're going to be seeing next week. You see how we have a lot of rain, a lot of sun, a few leaves chucked in there just for good measure. That is really what it's going to be like next week. A few days like Tuesday, as you can see, there's going to be some rain. Monday, there's going to be some sun. Now that sort of rain, sun on and off again relationship that we're having with the weather is definitely going to continue into the next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so on onto the weekend. So, so sad guys, but I hope, I hope you're enjoying this sort of yo-yo effect because <laughs> we just have to get used to it here in Syracuse. We are a bit. Well, speaking of unpredictability, Sonny, yeah. get a load of this. When you get out on the lake to fish, you should have a pretty clear idea of what you're going to bring onto your boat. But for one family in Montana, they had an unexpected catch. That's right. Earlier this month, Brett here forward cat caught a bobcat in his net on Flathead Lake. Reports say the family noticed the animal struggling to swim and brought it back to shore. An expert says that if they hadn't stepped in, the cat likely wouldn't have made it. I was looking at reports about this, guys, and they literally found that cat in the middle of the lake. It wasn't near the shore. People still don't know how it got actually got out there, but all well, I can it say swam. is lucky that they found it. <laughs> Where's its parents? It's, like, it's a pretty oh, it's small bobcat. Guys, I think I'm sure you all know this about me. I absolutely adore cats. I just can't believe this is the only reason I would ever go fishing is to catch a bobcat. <laughs> I can't believe that he, he seems fine. She seems fine. Look at her. She's very, she's wet, obviously, but it's going to be okay. Seems a little cold though, right? Yeah. yeah I, I've gone fishing many times in my day. Caught I've never bobcats. caught a fish and I'm confident because cats don't like me. I'm confident <laughs> I wouldn't catch a bobcat either. Well, I'd like to think that a bobcat maybe wouldn't like you especially, so lucky you haven't run into one of those. That's all the time we have for tonight. For more news around the clock, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Citrus TV News. For all of us here, I'm Connor White. And I'm Gabrielle Caracciolo. Good night.